Hi, this is Simon Obstall and welcome to another tutorial for Apple Motion. And today I'm going to do something a little bit different, which is to give you my top 10 tips to become a power user of the keyframe editor. So let's get started. OK, so I've made this very basic animation. Absolute rubbish. Don't know what I was thinking of. But anyway, this is just in order that we can start talking about the keyframe editor. So let's open up the keyframe editor. So as I'm sure you know, the shortcut for that is Command 8. And currently it's empty. And it's empty because we actually haven't got any parameters selected. But if I select the bulge, as you see, we get all the available parameters for the bulge. And if we were to select animated, we'll only get the animated parameter, which is this scale. But my first tip is going to be about curve sets. So you'll see that we've got the option here to create a new curve set. So let's do that and let's call this tutorial. And what we can do is we can put whatever we want into our curve set so we can control all the animated parameters in one place. So you'll notice that with animated selection, whatever is animated pops up into the keyframe editor, but we can't see all the animation curves at the same time. So that's why we're going to make this curve set. So the curve set is immediately populated by whatever you've actually got active. But let's just clear it by hitting this button here. And now we can add whatever we want. So let's add back that bulge scale. Let's come to the position of the rectangle. So we can just drag that X position only into there. We could drag all the positions if you wanted, but let's just only use the animated ones. For the prism, let's drag in its amount. We've also got the angle. Let's actually add that as well. And our bloom has got nothing. So anyway, I think we've probably got all the parameters that we might want. So remember that we can fit the visible curves into the window by clicking on this. And generally speaking, just talking about these buttons here, I would recommend that you have them all turned on. This is particularly useful, the auto scale option here, but toggle snapping is also useful. So that's a curve set. You can see how useful it is. We've got them all enabled. We, If we decide we don't actually want an item in the curve set, we can literally just select it and delete it out of the curve set. And I'm actually going to restore that one because I do want it. So our second tip is about interpolation. And I'm sure you know that you can select the overall interpolation for the curve from this menu here. So if I wanted to set it all to linear, I could just select linear. And you can see that set that to linear for all the keyframes. I'm just going to undo that because I want to show you a number of very useful tips. So supposing I only wanted this initial part of the curve to be linear. Well, I can hold down the control key and click on that part of the curve and select the interpolation from here. And that switches only that part to be linear. Actually, while we're at it, I just want to talk about a very useful interpolation option. I'm going to select this one here and right click on it and interpolate and continuous. And continuous is really useful because it actually puts Bezier shape on all of the curves like that. But we don't actually have to worry about the Bezier handle. So it's a very, very quick way of, of actually doing that. So well worth using continuous occasionally. And again, if you wanted, we could just make this bit of the curve continuous. So let's do that. Control click on it and make it continuous. And you can see we've got that on this. but. We've got our old Bezier curve still on the other one. So moving on to point three, and this one is about the control points themselves. So the first tip is that if we command click on any Bezier point or even a continuous point, it will turn it linear like that. So we can do that with this one. Command click on it makes it linear. So if we want to turn it back into a Bezier, we can select it and then holding down the command key, we can drag and then we get our Bezier handle back. So that's very useful. Let's now talk about breaking that Bezier handle. So if we command click on here, we can break tangents using that context menu. And now we can drag that and we're only affecting that side of the curve. So I can also command click on there and link the tangents, which means we can move both of them despite the fact they're broken. But we can also use that same menu to align tangents. And now we're back to an aligned Bezier handle like that. You'll notice that the displays automatically sort of redrew itself. And that's because of this button here, the auto scale. So if you see it popping, that's because of that 
option there, which is kind of keeping everything in view. Very handy. And there's one other extremely useful shortcut which we can use, and that is to hold down the Option key and drag on one of those handles. And you can see that automatically breaks it like that. And again, if we wanted to unbreak it, we could select it and then Command drag it. And that gives us back the linked unbroken Bezier handles. So moving on to point four, you've probably noticed that we've got these ghosted curves. I'm actually going to solo this particular curve, and I can do that by option clicking on its tick box there. So what is this ghosted curve? Well, that is its snapshot. So whenever you make a change, Motion remembers the last state of the curve. And that's because we've got the snapshot button enabled here. And if we wanted to revert at any time to that previous state, we could do it from here. So we could click on here, this disclosure triangle, and we could set to curve snapshot. And that redraws the curve to that snapshotted curve. And you could say, oh, well, I can just undo myself back to that. But often you don't want to, you because you've actually done a whole load of other changes and you don't want to undo them. So the advantage of a snapshot is that you really can come back to it at any time. So let's just have a look at another one. For example, if we turn back on these other ones and let's, let's make a change to everything like this. And you can see they've all got snapshot curves. And suppose we've gone away and done all sorts of other stuff. If we come back to one of these like this, you can see there's its curve and we can just reset that to its snapshot curve like that. Very useful indeed. So let's come on to point number five, and that's about numerical entry. So you probably know that if you double click on a keyframe, you can enter a new value for it. So if I double click on that one, I could set this to exactly 220, for example. So double click brings up the actual value and you can set it to precisely what you want it to be. So another thing we can do is that we can move a keyframe in time using the numbers. So I'm going to select this keyframe. And if I wanted to move it to precisely three seconds, I could just type three double O like that. And you can see that that's moved it to exactly three seconds. But I can also move it by increments. So if I were to type negative 10 and then enter, you can see that's moved it back 10 frames. So negative 20, enter, it's moved it back 20 frames. Plus 30, enter, it's moved it forward 30 frames. So with the plus and minus, you can actually move it by specific frame increments. But if you just type two seconds, it moves it to exactly two seconds. Very handy. While we're at it, I just want to mention another quite useful shortcut, which is Command Option Drag. So I'm going to hold down Command and Option and you can see that I can move the entire curve with all its points up and down like that. So that's quite a useful thing to know as well. So let's come on to point number six. It's quite a simple one. So I'm going to drag around these two keyframes like that and then right click to bring up the contextual menu. And I'm going to choose reverse keyframes. And you can see it's only reversed those two keyframes. Whereas if I were to select all of them like that and reverse them, I'm reversing the whole animation. But it's useful to know that you can do it to just selected keyframes as well. So point number seven is the bounding box. So the bounding box is here. Select that. And if we drag around all of those keyframes, you see we've now got a bounding box, which enables us to do all sorts of really interesting things. So if I were to drag this handle here, you can see that I'm reducing the time that all those keyframes are taking. I can also scale the actual values by using either this handle here or this handle here. And I can use the command key to actually scale it asymmetrically like that. Very, very nice option there. And if I hold down the option key, I can drag the entire bounding box so I can alter either the timing or the values or both at the same time. And of course, I can use the shift key to constrain the direction like that. So the bounding box is super useful. So point eight is the before and after option, which allows us to set what happens after the last keyframe or before the first keyframe. So at the moment, after our last keyframe, it just stays still. But we can choose a range of other options from this menu here. 
At the moment it's set to constant and that means it's static. If I switch to linear, you can see that the path continues along on its previous trajectory. And if I just move that last keyframe, you can see how that path is maintained. So that's linear. Ping pong is very useful because it loops backwards and forwards in a mirrored fashion. In this particular instance, it's not particularly obvious, so I'm just going to mix it up a little bit. So you can see we've, we're mirroring this funny little bit there. So actually, let's smooth that one out like that. There's, th th then that's really obvious, isn't it? That we're mirroring from the last keyframe. So that's different to the other option, which is repeat, which simply loops the whole animation from the first frame. So progressive is a really interesting one because it takes the position of the last keyframe to decide where it's going to start the repetition. And you can see that that results in it kind of going further and further down like that. And we can also turn that into keyframes. So after last keyframe, generate keyframes. And we can choose the number of cycles we want. So if we only want couple of cycles, we can choose two cycles, and you'll see that we've generated keyframes only for two loops after the initial one. And then obviously these become independent keyframes that, that we can adjust. So point nine is about copy and paste. And I'm just going to delete those keyframes there and set after last keyframe to constant. And let's just reset this to its snapshot. That could be quite fun. There you go. Reset to snapshot. You can see that uh, despite that all that work that we've done in between, the snapshot was still there and we could still come back to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this keyframe. So right click copy and I want to paste it here. Command V to paste it. And you can see that we've actually just pasted that value in there. Let's select this one. In actual fact, let's select both of those and come along to here and paste them in. So we've pasted both of those keyframes at a different point in time. But what we can also do, I'm going to copy all of those keyframes. I'm going to turn on the circle here and I'm just going to bring its X position into our curve set there. And I'm going to select it and I'm going to paste the keyframes that I've copied onto the circle. And you can see it's pasted them at my cursor position. So I didn't actually mean to do that. I should have come to the front and pasted them there. And you can see another circle is moving on X along with my rectangle. But as you saw, you, you can just paste them in at any point you want. So that's copy and paste. And you can even copy and paste between different parameters. So you could literally copy these this animation curve onto the bloom brightness or whatever. So let's do that. Let's actually drag the bloom brightness to our curve set. Bearing in mind, obviously, these aren't compatible parameters, but let's paste that onto there. Let's solo that. You can see that we've got those keyframes pasted onto the bloom brightness like that. So not particularly useful in this case, but it's well worth knowing that you can actually copy and paste between different sorts of parameters. So my final tip is this one. So I'm going to turn back on my rectangle here. And I'm going to assume that I have created a really nice animation curve that I want to save. So I'm going to select the parameter from the parameters list here. And then I'm going to come to the library and navigate down to favorites. And I'm just going to drag that into the library like this. So you see it's now in my library as position X. And if I now wanted to create a whole new object, so make them a new group and I'm going to make a circle. I can take my position X and drag it onto the circle. And now the circle has got that wonderful animation that I liked so much. So it's always there in my library if I want it. Really useful to know that you can actually save off animations like that. So there you go. 10 tips that will make you a keyframe editor power user. So thanks very much for watching and I'll see you again soon.